could start a house or dorm fire so be careful please i will not be leaving it unattended today so this is a self-heating pot these have gone viral on TikTok in the last few months. Basically, it's an electric pot that heats itself. You can get these in various sizes on Amazon. This one's a 1.5 liter size. And let's see what we get in the box. So it looks like we have a little glass lid. The pot itself. It's some sort of white plastic piece in here. This looks like maybe it holds eggs or something. Not really sure. Get your power cord, and then you get a little tiny spatula. So it looks like you plug a cord into the back here, and then you're able to set your temperature on here based on wattage. Today I'm gonna to be using this thing to cook up a couple different meals. We're gonna be going truck camping. We're gonna be seeing just how well this thing works. I have my doubts, but I've been proven wrong before. People on TikTok have been going crazy with these things, making food in bed, almost starting electrical fires. We're gonna see how much truth there really is to this product. Before I actually do bring it out with me, I wanna to test to see if it can boil water and maybe boil some eggs for breakfast tomorrow. So we're gonna do that here at the shop. Got a couple eggs here. All right, so this is your cord. So it plugs into the back right here. We're gonna plug it into the wall. We should have power. Pour some water in. First, we're gonna start off easy with hard boiling some eggs. And then for dinner, I'm gonna be making a seafood paella, which is gonna take about an hour of cooking, so. Two hard boiled eggs. I'd call that a uh, a pass for the first test. Now I've got to run to the grocery store, grab ourselves some ingredients for cooking tonight, find ourselves a camp spot to cook our paella at. All right, so we're here in Two Harbors, Minnesota, one of the big tourist cities here in Minnesota. Although it's pretty popular for this time of year, um, it's sm still a small city, so I'm kind of worried about the selection that we're gonna have in this grocery store. We need some less than normal ingredients, so we're gonna see what we can find. Up, guys drop 10 bucks don't don't lose your don't lose your money what do you do? i camp and uh cook chicken chicken yeah exactly chicken. that's a cool shirt i like it how you going boys <laughs> all right finding fresh shellfish here is gonna be gonna be tough and that one kid really wanted me, me to get chicken so i definitely grabbed some chicken i think we're gonna have to go frozen for the shrimps Saffron. Saffron's gonna be tough. There it is. What? They have Japanese curry here? That's freaking amazing. 
All right, we found everything. Consider my worries for nothing. How's it going? Thank you, you too. All right, we found some great ingredients. Um, the one downside is that the seafood's not gonna be fresh because their meat market was closed, but I think we're gonna be able to make do. I'm actually really surprised, like, they had everything. Okay, so I need to find a camp spot for the night. Um, as you guys know, I don't usually like staying in places that are reserved camp spots, but around this time of year, it is gonna be really tough to find anything that's free and secluded. So we're gonna go check out some reserved campsite spots. It also sounds pretty nice having access to a bathroom and possibly a shower. Hi, do you have any vacancy tonight? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, have a good one. I was just wondering if there's a campsite available for tonight. Is there anybody that I'd talk to about getting a campsite or is it kind of just first come first serve type of thing? Okay. Well, it doesn't sound super promising for this campsite. Like I said, very high tourist attraction area. You can see this place is freaking packed. There's your answer. No vacancy. All right, no vacancy at both of those campsites. I did see a malt shop though, that looks like it has my name on it. So we might be uh, having some dessert before we have our dinner. <laughs> Hey, can I do a chocolate peanut butter malt? Thank you very much. You too. I mean, you kind of have to, right? I mean, as much as I want to save this thing for after dinner, it's just, it's not going to survive, you know? It's, it's ice cream, it's going to melt. There's like chunks of peanut butter in here. This is awesome. Mmm. All right, this is not a campsite, but it's pretty awesome. Could very well get kicked out of here, but I don't know. I don't see any signs anywhere. All right, so right here is Lake Superior. Nice and calm out today. I'm gonna go ahead and load up the groceries in the back of the truck, and I think I'm gonna be just spending my time back there for the rest of the night. get comfortable the one thing i haven't really tested yet i mean a lot of a lot of the videos i see on tiktok of people using this thing they're like cooking it in their beds cooking up ramen or i've actually seen the one dude make like birria beef tacos from scratch in one of these which is pretty intense today we're gonna probably going for about an hour while we uh cook some paella we'll see what holds up so the inside of this is like a non-stick pan so you have to wash this thing by hand. Um, and then everything else on the outside is plastic. You must have some sort of heating element under there. There's some ventilation to let out hot air. A little sticker on the bottom showing that it has up to 600 watts of output. You put this thing underwater or in a dishwasher, you will ruin it. The dial is also made out of plastic. And has two settings. It has 150 watt and 600 watt you can't really like it's not like a dial where you can like put it halfway in between it's either off at 150 or at 600. the handle's made out of plastic too feels relatively sturdy it doesn't feel like the handle's gonna come off of there the other weird thing about this is that you don't really have any view or access to where a fuse might be it very well could start a house or dorm fire so be careful please i will not be leaving it unattended today what I will be doing though is cutting up my vegetables for my paella. Um, and then we're gonna be letting it cook. Let him cook. Didn't realize I forgot to buy peas. My Spaniards, please help me. Tell me if paella is supposed to have peas or not. All right. Dice up an onion real quick. And 
And since this is a one pot recipe, I'm just gonna throw everything right into our one pot. Garlic. Now we're gonna pour a little bit of olive oil into the pot. We're gonna start heating it, fingers crossed that it works. So we've got some olive oil here. Pour a drizzle of that in there. All right, so the cord's going in. And I go plug into our battery. And we're gonna start trying to cook it at 600. Now, anything heating related, like electric heat, is going to pull a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of battery power. Um, obviously, you don't have to worry about this as much if you're at home and have an outlet. But if you're camping, you really either want to have shore power, so you can just plug right into a campsite, or you need a lot of lithium battery. Go ahead and use the give in utensil. It's a nice rubberized spatula, actually. All right, so our main goal is we're just gonna cook the onions until translucent here. It's heated up so fast, like that's crazy. All right, let's just see out of curiosity how I can cook it on bed. Be like a TikToker, here you start a fire. I'm bad if I start myself on fire right now. And uh, not making it out of this that the headlines read TikToker dies doing trend or something stupid. I'm not a TikToker, okay? I have a TikTok. Follow me on there. But. All right. Onions are getting a bit translucent, so we're going to add our chopped tomato. Our little bit of paprika a bay leaf, and some of the most expensive spice in the world, saffron. All right, I'm just gonna add a little dash of broth. And then I'm going to take one chicken thigh. Dice it up. This part gets kind of sketchy, so we're gonna take it off of the, uh, the bed. But the bed honestly doesn't even feel that warm after having it sit on there for about 15 minutes. Okay. A good way that you tell if mussels are bad, usually if they're open, that means they're not good anymore. But that one's just still alive. He closed himself back up. All right, there we go. Okay, so we've got all of our ingredients in our paella. Um, it's got to cook uncovered now for about 12 minutes. And then we can cover it up and everything should kind of come right together. We've got chorizo, we've got shrimps, we've got mussels. The only thing we're missing in there is calamari. Chicken chorizo, shrimp, and mussels is enough meat for me. Okay, so now that the broth's starting to bubble like that, we're actually gonna switch the uh, we're gonna switch the wattages from 600 to 150, so like a, a lower setting. So you don't want that rice in there getting disturbed too much. All right, so now this is gonna sit like this for about 10 to 15 minutes. We'll cover it up for five, and that'll be it. Let's sit and wait.
I gotta say, I am pretty surprised about how hot this thing is not getting. Like, I could very well cook this on my lap. Plus one. It's doing good. And no fires yet. All right, and you're actually supposed to put a towel over the top of your lid just so the steam can escape is easy. So we're doing that now. I'm gonna crack one of these bad boys open too. Mm. As good as that Sunday was, I definitely got a little bit of a sugar rush from it. And I'm looking forward to eating some actual food. All right, this has been cooking for about 30 minutes with the cover on. I'm gonna see. Whoa. Dang. You can see our muscles open up. That means they're cooked. I think our chorizo's done. At least I hope it is. Now we can just unplug this thing. We have our bowl. That's really nice, actually. Normally cooking something this long would take a lot of propane. So using an electric cooker is actually really nice because although it does drain the battery, it's kind of nice just to not run an open flame for that long. I want to say this one costs around $43. Um, I think there might be cheaper ones out there, but I was a little scared to cheap out on something like this. But there we go. Seafood paella. It's been a while since I made paella. I think the last time I made it was when I was in Mexico two years ago. Um, I cooked it for... Raul. I had a lot of fun with uh, them at their ranch and they were kind enough to like let me sleep at their place in Baja. And we went to the fish market one day and I cooked up some paella. So I don't think that this is going to be as fresh as a Mexican paella, but it does look dang good. All right. Let's do a little taste test here. Mmm. <laughs> Taste the saffron right away. Rice is cooked nice. Mm. Take that bit of leaf out of there. I forget what they call the crust of rice that you want to get on the bottom, um, but it is a it is a thing that you want to achieve in a paella. I might let mine go a little too long because it looks like it burned, but I wanted to make sure that my chorizo was going to get cooked. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. If you've never made a paella before. Honestly, recommend it. It's a good, good group meal. You can make it in like a giant pot and serve up to as many people as you want, but you can serve six easily with a bigger pot. And it's kind of a an easy recipe, a sit and forget type of recipe. If I remember to, I'll leave a recipe in the description below, but you can also just Google seafood paella. Something, something close to what I made here will pop up. Mm. There's a lot of flavors in this thing, but it is relatively bland. I think it's because I didn't use fresh seafood. And also, I think I'm supposed to use a little more chicken stock. I wish I would have used, I don't know, maybe two jugs of that stuff rather than diluting it with water. Because it does have a lot of flavor. I don't want to say it doesn't, but it could be a little bit better. A little bit, like, saltier. Whew. The other thing I was looking forward to about testing this pan is just seeing how well it's actually non-stick. And I'm actually really surprised because if you can see... This is a piece of the paella that I burned. And you can see it is very charred on the bottom, but none of it's stuck to the base of the, uh, the pot. That's pretty crazy. This thing very well could have a place in my truck. What was nice is just how easy that was. I mean, I didn't have to get a stove ready. It's literally plugged in a thing and cut up some food and bam. All right, well, I'm going to watch some One Piece. I'm planning a road trip to Utah um, that I'm planning on leaving in in a couple, couple days here, maybe a week. So let me know if you have any ideas for me while I'm out visiting Utah, the places you want to see me visit. It's been a while since I've been out there. Probably do some rainbow trout fishing and I'm just going to get myself back on the road and see see what it's like again. And I'm excited. We'll be able to do these things without your guys' support. I really appreciate everybody that watches these videos. Um, I feel like I don't say that enough. So thank you. I love you. All right, shut this off.
9 a.m. Bugs were uh, finding their way into my camper shell last night, but I slept like a baby. Nice to wake up to a perfectly hard-boiled egg. Not only do I think that the electric pot was a nice addition to camping, I think it might have a home for the indefinite future inside of my truck. A really nice set and forget piece of equipment to have around if you have the battery power for it. I've got a little bit of a drive home here. Hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. As always, until next time, you already know the drill. Just keep on trucking.